Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. And you're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast for not... Oh, shit. <laughs> we're getting, like, like worse... Every time I just look at you... We're getting just... worse at recording than better. Like, it's actually not... It's kind of fun. Okay. Serious. Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. And you... <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Louise. Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. And you're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast where not everything is true. The aim of the game is to find out whether the story is actually a murder or if it's just a myth. Now, let's get started. Hi, Emma. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited for this Christmas episode, the Serene, the Christmas time. <laughs> Christmas has just ended. Christmas, I know. <laughs> so this is not a Christmas episode, but well, save that excitement like only- for 2024. <laughs> I will do, I will do, okay. For episode 33, I'll be telling Emma a story of modern witchcraft. Non-Christmas related, would you believe? Non- oh but I hope everyone God. had a lovely Christmas. And I a happy new life. year. Oh, yeah, this happy new year. Modern witchcraft story. Modern witchcraft story. So this story is set in 2015, and it revolves around Antonia Monvoisin, who is a 31-year-old self-proclaimed witch from Lowell, Massachusetts. She was related to Rowena Monvoisin on her mother's side. And Rowena was one of the over 200 people accused of witchcraft in the 1960s in Salem. Oh. Uh, Rowena was put on trial, but the verdict was innocent, and her story has become popular in the Salem trials, as Rowena stated throughout the trials that she was a witch and never denied it, as many of the other defendants had. So she's a direct descendant of a Salem Salem witch. witch. So, like, throughout okay. the generations, like, the women would kind of, like, tell stories down the years that they were um, witches and yeah. had, like, enchanting and magical powers, but it was, like, a kind of a family tradition, but, like, a joke. Like, okay. a, they never believed yeah. it to be true. This was until in 2013 when Antonia joined Instagram and started to see modern witchcraft gain attraction again <laughs> online. Okay. So she's seen it, like, hashtag trending. <laughs> Literally, like, she's seen it trending it and has seen it's, like, a thing and it's taking off. Um, at the time, she was working as a high school receptionist and her family kept trying to convince her against these beliefs. They begged she seek help, but to no end as she continued this lifestyle. And in May of 2014, Antonia posted herself as a witch online with the social media handle Monvoys and Witchblood. So she was kind of going off, like, her grandmother's, or not her grandmother's, her descendants, like... I guess the popularity from that. Five. So it appears from the videos online that she did truly believe herself to be a witch and had many anecdotes to prove her powers. Around this time, she quit her job as a high school teacher and began a career in future telling and casting of spells in her home in Lowell. Why are you smiling at me like that? Because I'm just trying to figure this out. This is a crazy story. Okay. So Antonia had accepted two teen boys, Michael Reed and Sebastian Mortis, as her clients for 3.30pm on the 2nd of July 2015. She took bookings to her social media and website at a fee of $98 per reading. The boys had asked to pay in cash as they didn't have debit cards, as well as if they could have the appointment together as they were nervous and only one of the boys could drive. Throughout their online messages, it was seen they had asked Antonia if she could cast spells on them for prosperity and good financial fortune. It was found the teens had been messaging back and forth on Facebook with violent and aggressive messages about Monvoisin and planning to kill her by suffocation and stabbing. Um, does it say why they were getting violent towards her? Is it because she's a witch? Yeah, they were mocking her. Okay. Um, Antonia lived alone and the body had not been found until 72 hours later. So obviously they had gone through with their plan. And killed her. When the police received an anonymous tip that a crime had been committed at this location, the corpse was found face down in her study with over 10 stab wounds and a rope which the autopsy confirmed was used to stop her breathing. Sebastian had been tormented by their crime days after and called the police. He then left a note apologizing apologizing for his involvement and the shame it had brought, um, his involvement in the woman's death and the shame it had brought to his parents before jumping off a bridge in the city of Massachusetts and dying. Reed was then put on trial and blamed Mortis numerous times for coercing him into the murder. However, the messages showed equal contribution in the planning of Antonia's death. The jury unanimously found Reed guilty of one account of murder and he was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He is currently serving his time in Sousa Baranowski Correctional Centre, Massachusetts. And that's the end of my story. 
Okay. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? Immediately wanted to say murder. Then, uh, because it's just so detailed. But And then I'm like, maybe she just knows about the witches. Maybe I am. And if you're like, yeah. That'd be crazy. Honestly, are you... Marhuvit, <laughs> Marhuvit, whatever you said. Is that your real name? Malvoisen. Yeah. Malvoisen. Um, yeah. So like, there's a background story there, but that could have been like separately research and all true. And then, yeah, I was like, okay, this is a good story. Um, the only thing that's getting me though is the fact that these two lads were like planning it together, and then one almost immediately was like feeling very remorseful i feel like the people mm. people that like plan murders together or like even yeah i get you so i'm like is this just a way for her to wrap up the story and pin it all on one guy and then get you know kind of whatever mm, there wasn't too many details about it itself what'd you say she suff- got suffocated and stabbed oh and stabbed mm-hmm. okay but we only seen a rope did it was the stab no Weapon there with o- over ten stab wounds in a rope. No, I didn't okay. talk about it. Hmm. Murder weapon. Right. Uh, I'm just gonna go with. Myth based off my gut instinct on the remorse of the guy. Okay, so it is a myth. Yes, <laughs> but I would argue that like yes, yes, yes. A lot of times in stories, a teen does something and then does so like does feel really remorseful. Like I feel like it's a teen act of rebellion. Like when they were planning, I didn't say how long they were planning for. They could have been just planning it for a day. Like, mm, if, okay, the, teens the do amount, rash things and then regret it. Like, teens, they don't have their full development. Yeah, but teens that plan and but do murders sure. and go through with it do not ever show remorse. And for sure they do. For sure loads of people who have killed okay, people have felt remorse. But, like, the vast majority of, like... A young person that's going to kill, they don't have any, like, negatives in the world yet. They haven't faced t- bad things, usually. Okay, that's also a vast claim on my part. They could have mm. definitely faced bad things. I feel like we're both but, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, in different circumstances, both right. But that was just my gut feeling. If you're planning to kill someone, they do yeah. kill someone. You it was just kind of a way to wrap like, up the oh. story, if I'm honest. Yeah, but also, I didn't feel like I needed to include the detail about the murder weapon. Like, I wasn't going into that kind of detail. But anyway. Yeah, but... Yeah, because it kind of quickly wrapped over... Oh, she got murdered. The body was found. He was really remorse instead of, like, da-da-da, they found this, this, and this. And then he kind of... Also, bringing shame on his family. Bit dodge, because, like... He was ready and willing to kill a person, and then after the yeah, fact, it was like my remorse. family. Then it like hits you. It should have hit you well before now. Like, I'm not saying it's a good person. Yeah, okay. It agree, just hits you agree at some to point. Disagree, but that's yeah. just my thoughts on this. Story. I just want to prove you back <laughs> that it was actually a murder, and then you can change your mind. But I think maybe it's too late for that. Because it was a myth. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I guess we'll wrap this up here. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. On this week's episode, I correctly guessed Louise's murder story was a myth. Find us on all streaming platforms. Join us next week for another thrilling adventure. Remember, it's myth until proven murder. Slay. Slay. That would upset me. I'm so happy. <laughs> Stop it. Why are you so happy? I haven't got one of your myths in ages.